Welcome back. Sorry for the interruption at the end of the previous video. So we were discussing reverse T3 and new thyroid 6 syndrome. Now unfortunately when I copied uh, the image here across it has failed to copy in the bit with reverse T3 in so I'll just add this back on but this gives us a good excuse to go over this again uh, to remind ourselves of this. Um, so remember what we've added on to this picture is the fact that Thyroxin, the main thyroid hormone that's secreted by the thyroid gland, when it reaches peripheral tissues, it has an iodine atom taken off. Now, if it has a certain one of the four iodines removed, it becomes T3, which is actually the active thyroid hormone binds to a receptor and changes uh, metabolic activity within the cell. However, often T4 is not converted into T3, instead a different iodine atom is removed and it becomes reverse T3. Reverse T3 is not capable of binding to a receptor, it does not have any uh, signaling function and therefore it's chucked back into the blood and it is later removed gradually by the kidney. So remember T4, not all of it is converted into T3, quite a lot of it is converted into reverse T3 which is useless. It's only the T3 that is then active and actually binds to the receptor and performs a metabolic role. Now, usually there's a balance. There's a certain amount of the T4 that becomes T3 and a certain amount that becomes reverse T3 and it stays like that all the time. So this is perfectly controllable. However, in this condition, euphyroid 6 syndrome, the balance is tipped. And it's not well understood how this occurs, but at the peripheral tissues in the body, suddenly they stop making that much T3 at all, and they start making more reverse T3. So they take, still take in the thyroxin, but they reduce their conversion to T3 and hugely increase their conversion to reverse T3. And this means that their production of the T3 goes down, and therefore the active signaling that occurs at the cells in the body is reduced, and therefore metabolic activity all over the body goes down. And this is the situation where it is actually relevant to re measure reverse T3, because in this situation, euphyroid 6 syndrome, the reverse T3 level is going to go up in the bloodstream, whilst T3 level is going to go down because they're producing less T3 at the um, all of the cells in their body. Um, and remember, that's the main actual source of T3. Only a little bit of T3 comes from the thyroid in the usual situation. It massively goes up in early stage Graves' disease. But most of the T3 normally is produced by peripheral conversion of T4 into T3. So if we're reducing our peripheral conversion of T4 into T3 because it's all being channeled into reverse T3, the free T3 level is going to go down. So in euphyroid 6 syndrome, what's going to happen is this one is going to go up and this one is going to go down. So this is a situation where it's actually uh, relevant to re measure not just uh, free T3, but also reverse T3, euphyroid 6 syndrome. So let's just talk about this condition a little bit more. So we said in the at the end of the previous video that it has a lot of other names. It's also called sick euphyroid syndrome. Non-thyroidal illness syndrome is another name for it. And this, then this big name, Tacitus, which stands for thyroid allostasis in critical illness, um, tumours, uremia, and starvation. And that's actually a nice name because it's telling us that this happens this condition occurs in critical illness, that's the CI, um, tumours, so when people are at the end stage of cancer, extremely cachectic, this can occur, uremia, people who are in end stage renal failure, so their kidneys are not functioning, maybe they'll be on uh, looking at going on dialysis or um, um, having a renal transplant, and then starvation, so people who are uh, extremely malnourished, either um, due to anorexia, it would be the main cause of malnourishment in the Western world, or if they're from a developing country, uh, starvation due to lack of food supply. Uh, any of those things, they can lead to this condition occurring. So I said at the end of the previous video that if you are septicemic for uh, a long period of time, maybe about a week, uh, and remember septicemic means an extremely severe infection somewhere in the body, if you are septicemic for a long period of time, i.e. extremely ill from an infection for about a week, you can develop this condition, euphyroid 6 syndrome. 
So as I've said, what happens in this condition is it seems to be part of the body's response to you being extremely unwell. Somehow the body channels, the starts channeling the T4 into reverse T3 rather than T3. And the aim of this is to try and reduce the metabolic activity of the body. Because, of course, the body is extremely ill and needs to conserve resources in this critical period. So the idea is that the body tries to reduce metabolic rate in order to conserve resources. And one of the ways it does this, one of the crucial ways it does this, is by somehow getting all the tissues of the body to channel T4 into the useless reverse T3 rather than making T3. So that's what happens in this Euphyroid 6 syndrome. And as they say, uh, the pathology is not particularly well understood, but it is, it is a recognised condition that this does happen in people who are extremely ill, uh, either from an extremely bad infection uh, due to cancer, renal failure, or if, they've, if they're in extremely advanced stages of starvation. And it has to be extremely severe um, starvation before this starts to happen. So let's now think about what would happen to the TFTs in this case. Now, we've talked about how um, free T3 is going to go down, so this level is going to be low. Reverse T3 is going to go high, and I'm afraid I don't know off by heart the normal level for reverse T3, the normal range for it, um, because it's a blood test that we do so infrequently. Um, but there will be some normal range there, so, but, and it's going to go above the top threshold of that normal range. So reverse T3 is going to be high, free T3 is going to be low. What are the normal TFTs, the standard TFTs, going to be doing? Well, you might think, if T3 goes down, surely that's going to mean that the thyroid gland, uh, sorry, the pituitary gland is going to end up releasing more TSH, because remember, the pituitary gland measures the T4 and T3 level. If T3 is going down, then surely the pituitary gland is going to acknowledge that and increase its secretion of TSH, and therefore T4 is going to go up. So you might think this one's going to go up and this one's going to go up, but that is not what happens, because... Remember what the body's trying to achieve with euphyroid 6 syndrome. The body is extremely sick because of uh, critical illness, tumours, uremia or starvation, one of these. It's trying to conserve energy and therefore it's reducing metabolic rate. And one of the mechanisms it uses to do this is converting more of the T4 into reverse T3, channeling it down this route rather than converting it to the active T3. However, it doesn't just use that it also actually goes to the pituitary gland itself and says, why don't you reduce your production of TSH so that we're reducing our production of thyroid hormone from the start? So this syndrome actually has two components, not just the channeling of T4 into reverse T3 rather than T3, but also an actual central component that's reduced the secretion of TSH, reduced the secretion of thyroxine, and that will also help us reduce down our metabolic rate. So what actually usually ends up happening is these two end up normal. You might say, surely they're going to end up low then. TSH is going to be low and free T4 is going to be low if what you've said is just going to be true uh, about them reducing their output. However, remember that the pituitary has um, two voices shouting at it. It has the voice of this syndrome saying we need to reduce our output, but it is also continuously measuring the thyroid hormone levels, which are low, uh, T3 level is low, um, and that shouting increase your output. So often what happens at least in the early stages of this syndrome, is that these ones are normal. TSH output is normal. 3T4 is usually kept at a normal level. And then, as we've said, 3T3 is low and reverse T3 is elevated. And as I say, the reason that these are not reduced is because they're also trying to go up in response to the low T3 level. Uh, and therefore, the two effects cancel out and they end up normal. However, in the more advanced stages of this syndrome, what can happen is the voice of the reduced metabolic output uh, ethos gets louder and the pituitary gland then does end up reducing its TSH level. This comes down below normal levels and then 3T4 also drops down. So in the more advanced stages of ESS, um, this one would be low and this one would be low as well. However, 
often in the earlier stages, what you would see is normal, standard TFTs, but they might be displaying symptoms of hypothyroidism. For instance, bradycardia, uh, hypothermia, reduced body temperature, um, constipation, these sort of symptoms of hypothyroidism, even though their standard TFTs might come back as normal in the early stages, and that would be when you would want to um, measure their uh, free T3 level and their reverse T3 level. Okay, so to end the video then, let's just summarise what we have seen in this video. So we have studied the purpose of measuring free T3 and reverse T3, and we've seen two important examples. So the first we discussed was Graves' disease, and we discussed how in early stage Graves' disease, the uh, antibodies directed against the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor can actually trigger an increase in the production of T3 by the thyroid gland before it triggers an increase in the production of T4. And that means T3 goes up, T4 remains the same, the high T3 then um, shuts down TSH production by the pituitary gland, so TSH becomes suppressed. So when measuring the standard TFTs, you would uh, find that TSH is low but free T4 is normal, i.e. an incongruence there, because normally if TSH is low, that should either correspond to free T4 being low if we're talking about secondary hypothyroidism, or it should correspond to this being far too high if we're talking about primary hyperthyroidism. Uh, and that incongruence would then be a um, indication for them measuring free T3 to see if that's elevated, which could explain why their TSH is suppressed, especially if they've got symptoms of hyperthyroidism, you know, sweating, shaking, um, tachycardia, these kind of things. The second thing that we talked about was euthyroid 6 syndrome, which is a condition that people get in extremely severe illness. So these tests, uh, free T3 and reverse T3, they're often performed in intensive care uh, settings where people are extremely ill from septicemia, uh, end-stage cancer, uremia, uh, or extreme starv starvation. Um, in this condition, what happens is the body tries to shut down its metabolic activity, and the way that it does this is there are two mechanisms. It acts centrally, it reduces TSH output to reduce thyroid hormone production, but it also um, acts all over the body to channel T4 into the reverse T3 pathway rather than converting it into active T3. And um, initially, the results that you would get on thyroid function tests in the early stage of this syndrome would be that TSH and free T4 would generally be normal, and the reason for that is that the low T3 level is shouting at the pituitary gland to continue releasing TSH, and that balances the voice of the euthyroid 6 syndrome that is telling the pituitary gland to reduce its production of TSH. So overall, it keeps a normal production of TSH, and therefore we get a normal level of T4. However, free T3 does go down because we're no longer producing as much from T4 at the peripheral body sites, and reverse T3 goes up. Uh, so you might see normal uh, standard TFTs, however the patient's got symptoms of hypothyroidism such as bradycardia, hypothermia, inconsistent maybe with um, the septicemic picture which usually produces tachycardia and hyperthermia, um, well you wouldn't call it hyperthermia but feb a fever, um, and that would be an indication maybe for measuring these additional TFTs, the free T3 and the reverse T3. So the main indication for measuring reverse T3 is euthyroid 6 syndrome, free T3, the main two indications are early stage Graves' disease, i.e. hyperthyroidism, and euthyroid 6 syndrome. There are a number of other much, much rarer conditions where it is relevant to measure some of these, but they are so small print that it's hardly worth bothering to know them. These are the two main reasons that you would do these blood tests. So I hope that that has um, explained the purpose of free T3 and reverse T3. For most standard problems, the normal TFTs, TSH and free T4 are perfectly sufficient. Thank you for watching this video.